Hi, this is Lauren Cheek from Lauren Copia. We are uh, doing a video today where I'm going to take you through my paths. I'm going to start out in the woodland behind my house, in the gnome garden is what I call it, <clears throat> and show you uh, where there's a stretch of property that's a buffer between our properties. It's woodland that's just for birds and things like that. Nobody's ever developed it. And I have my back 40 feet of yard uh, that the kids like to ride their bikes through. And I made a path just so I could see my flowers and stuff. It was just empty back lottage for me. Um, and I drug brush back there. I used to do that. And I just figured, well, let's make this beautiful and do something with it and get out here where I can actually see the birds and stuff in the woodlands around the house. So anyway, I'm going to take you on that tour and then I'll bring you back through the garden and I'll show you what plants are out here <clears throat> and uh, tell you why I have them and how they grow and where, what they, you know, why they grow uh, the best. All right, we're turning this way. This is my gnome garden. It's marked by the archway. And there's also another entrance on that side. There are paths back there. It's kind of like a labyrinth or a maze. You can actually see where you're at though. It doesn't block your view, but it's a maze. You go around in a circle. It's fun to ride the bikes back here. The kids love doing it. So they asked me if they could like build a fort in my backyard. And uh, since there's property as a buffer, they extended the concept that I had and ran with it. So here we are. We're on the gnome path. You can see the garden through here. You see the yard through here, but it feels kind of private and distant. And back to nature. Anyway, this is a big azalea right here. It's gigantic. It blooms kind of a purple color uh, in the spring. This is a red bud that blooms early spring. I have several of these in the yard um, and they grow really well here. This is a crepe myrtle that blooms late summer, fall in my yard uh, in open territory. It will bloom all summer long. They're gorgeous plants. <clears throat> For Scythia. Blooms yellow, early fall. Forsythia, and then in here I have hydrangeas. I need to add more of these because it's just woodland, but it's still pretty just as it is. I mean, look at that view of the yard. It's worth coming back here. Poison ivy. Leaves the three, let it be. I'm not highly allergic, so I just mow the path wide enough that if people come back here, they're not likely to brush up against it. Anyway, so it's gorgeous, and it loops around this way and goes out into the yard that way. It comes around this side, so you can look at the chickens and the goats that are in the backyard. They've had goats before. They don't right now. <clears throat> and this is my best friend that lives next door to me. Look at that. It's a guinea fowl. They're really, really loud, and they fly, like, uh, really well. Look at all the ducks. So I get that little view when I come back here. And the kids love to uh, dirt bike back in here. So they mowed the pass out for me because I was busy working the rest of the yard and hadn't hit it yet this year. It was on my list. They marked that off for me. I have mine marked by lanterns. But then they came and they mulched back into the property that's just empty land. And it was the coolest thing because I had no idea what they were doing. And I followed them back here. And these bushes right here grow in a natural habit that they lean like that. The kids just hollowed out the middle, you know, took the extra limbs out of the inside and made these huts. It's the coolest thing to walk down the path like this. You're in these magnolias and wild plants with birds and stuff flying around, not very far from the highway. And then suddenly you've got like a little play fort area right near the house. And they did these little round huts. I was pretty impressed. And a mulching mower will actually go through the back of your yard if you have a woody yard. Um, you can mow paths in it like this. Sometimes people have yards taken over with ivy. <clears throat> They're like, why do you do that? Make a path. Enjoy the birds. So it's got a view back the opposite way. Gnarly tree. That's a hickory right there. <laughs> and then you come back here. <clears throat> And it immediately gets cooler. You're thick enough into the forest that you're being shielded very, very well from the sun. <clears throat> and you feel it drop 10 degrees. It's a pretty amazing experience. <laughs> so this is my next door neighbor's property. So you see how much buffer there is between our properties, right? 
But this he used to farm on, and I don't know if they passed away or what happened or you know went to an old folks home. I never met them, but I used to come back here with the, the other, the older kids and my nephews and nieces. And this was all farmland. They had it plowed up and uh, little crops in here. It's a pretty long, long lot like mine is. Mine's three quarter of an acre. But you see how it quickly overgrew? That's Georgia for you. Things to take over and suddenly you got the forest retaking over. Anyway, they made paths, mulched them through here. Very cool, very cool, very cool. And over there are the bushes. How they grow that they just clip the insides out. <clears throat> but it's cool. Their parents got them off their computers. And they were in my backyard and they just kind of wandered out here from there. Not realizing it wasn't still my backyard. <laughs> but they've got a little camp going and trails so they can run their bikes back through here down all these paths they got a little hammock these kids have been having the time of their life this is the same kind of stuff I did um, when I was a kid and I could get away I'd be in the cow field camping or running through the marsh you know because I grew up uh, at Bethesda which is on uh, Moon River um, or when I'd be on the weekends with my friends, if I could go away, uh, we'd bike through the woods just like this, a construction site, whatever, just bike for miles and miles. This is just a slice of nostalgia for me. So they created a path and then it goes all the way back to the back of their house. That's where that path leads. So how fun is that? All right, we're going to walk back to my house, and I'm going to let you enjoy the view, and then I'll tell you about what's in my yard. I just thought this was amazing. And there really are a lot of birds and possums and raccoons and stuff. Occasionally we see deer. There are coyote out here. See, this is weird. Magnolias grow back here, but they never bloom because it's too much shade. So I see them dotted throughout here, but... Um, <clears throat> they don't get enough light to flower. Magnolia flowers are beautiful, so I assume the squirrels must be taking cones with the seeds in it. And uh, dropping them out here, or the birds, or somebody. I just think this is great, though. Look how beautiful that view is through here. So I can get a little walk in without even leaving, you know, my neighborhood and be out in nature. And I always enjoyed that about the back of my yard, but like I said, they took my idea and ran with it. <clears throat> so, we are almost back at my yard again. Hear the birds? The birds, the chickens, the ducks. Now we're back in our yard. You see the lanterns? This is my yard. The gnome garden. And the reason why I call it the gnome garden is I have gnomes hidden all over. There's like three of them. And you have to spot them. So we're coming out the other path on the other side of the yard. And basically what I do with my style, because I have so much space, is <clears throat> I work with nature, try to keep the animals and stuff alive. Uh, I'm trying to do some gardening. It's too cool right now, so things are not germinating properly. So I'm going to get back to that. I do have a little bit of corn coming up. Um, this is an empress tree. That's wild. Some of these are jasmines, poplars, uh, pines. And then I planted this... Uh, <clears throat> weeping willow um, so that you would have something drapey and in the wind that would flow when the wind was blowing to draw your attention out into the yard as a contrast to the natural trees that are here. And then I created this bed and I've added on to it and I'll probably add on to it more. But uh, these are knockout roses. They come several uh, colors. This one is peach. I decided to go with peach in this whole bed for the dominant color. I have lots of other things in here. <clears throat> but they're low maintenance, they grow in the sun, they need a pretty good amount of sun 
to do well, but they're like completely almost self-maintaining with a little light pruning here and there once in a while. Um, and hundreds and hundreds of blooms on each one. Got a foxglove going here. I'm going to come around where you can look at it from the side because it's kind of pretty contrasted against each other. And of course, fire pit because I got plenty of wood around here to burn. <laughs> uh, these are gladiolas. I did not know gladiolus droop, but grew them two years in a row and kept noticing that and then I had to look it up online and then I bought these little uh, metal holders so when they bloom, they won't flop. But like these are Dutch irises, they will uh, hold up their own weight. Gorgeous. They're on their way out right now. But the grass is pretty. This grass is about five foot nine inches tall right here. It's almost, it's like the height I am. It's my height. Uh, this, this is St. John's work. We'll show you some of this again because it'll be pretty as different things bloom. But what I do in the garden is I have the roses, which bloom all the time. I have the sage, which comes up um, and gives you a little purple. And then I have, these are all perennials, by the way. Um, this is a uh, spider wart. It's closing up now because it's uh, taking a rest. They open up and then they close as the sun gets, you know, further in the sky. <clears throat> and then these are uh, different lilies. Some of these are irises. Uh, these are uh, orange day lilies. That will bloom uh, when the crepe myrtles bloom. And I have three crepe myrtles out here. This one is a light pink. That one right there behind the blackberries. That's a blackberry shrub. <laughs> a bunch of them <coughs> actually um this one blooms purple and then this one right here which is the oldest one um and the one in the back are hot pink they're the same color that are up by my mailbox anyway these are carpet roses right in here carpet roses come in several colors let me get a close-up it's kind of getting blurred out by the sun uh the your colors that you're seeing here are pretty good but the camera tends to overexpose them on the phone so whatever you see is going to be a lot brighter and crisper than what you're seeing on the film um yes but all perennials in here of different types black-eyed susans these are uh caryopsis um yeah so it has different things that bloom different times of the year and there's always something blooming in every season that it's warm and even in the cold not out here but around the house there's usually something that blooms at that time of the year so i've got like a four uh season garden now these over here are rows of sharons i let them grow up rows of sharons are a hardy hibiscus they're gorgeous they bloom at the same time that the daylilies do they also bloom at the same time as uh, the crepe myrtles uh, into late summer. They bloom a little earlier than the crepe myrtles. Um, but this is a very cold, hardy hibiscus. And it's so hardy here, like everything is, that it will produce young all the way around the bottom. And you have to mow it out. Um, so I recommend this plant for its beauty. But maintain it by weeding around it or mowing around it. Because it will reproduce in this hot climate or any climate that's kind of warm uh, and create a forest which was what that hedge is over there where you see my uh, chair and table the blue chair and table I cut that out this year to reclaim some of the yard because <clears throat> crepe myrtle had grown up in there this is a mulberry bush mulberry tree actually they grow up into trees the birds planted all of these so I select because they're prolific just like the other ones and will grow up everywhere I kill and keep what I think is okay where it's at. So the birds have something to eat. I can come out and make like smoothies out of this. Um, this <clears throat> is a Kibia quinata. See that leaf? Now this is a beautiful, beautiful plant and it's growing along the fence <clears throat> and it looks really good. But as you can see, it really in good conditions. When I first planted it, it was a drought for seven years. And it said it would grow 30 feet, and it does. And it will cover up almost anything in the yard. Um, but since this is all kind of a blockade anyway between me and the next yard, I don't worry about it, but I cut it out here, buying the crepe myrtles, and then let it grow up on the fence. This one is white. She's got a clematis, my best friend, growing in here. Uh, this one has white flowers. They smell like chocolate, some people say. To me, they smell like vanilla. 
<clears throat> but they're called a chocolate vine and I only recommend that you ever plant them out in the middle of the yard on a gazebo and that you keep it mowed out from around them. They're very easy to pull up. Um, they're not really resistant, but they do run on runners and they're running all over the place. I think it's pretty. I kill them where they're invading too much. Uh, this is the jasmine tree right here. These are an invasive species. I let some of them because uh, I let some of them grow and some of them I kill like everything pops up everywhere. Um, but this one, whoo, that fragrance in the air when you're out on a warm day like today is amazing. And then these are maples, a lot of this stuff, unanimous on the back, more mulberry. Um, and then across the yard, <clears throat> I've got, uh, a couple of tea roses. I started out with tea roses. They're much more high maintenance and much more disease prone. And they only produce one or two blooms per stem. They're gorgeous. But this is a knockout rose that was overgrown in here. Um, I let it grow for years and years. It was about 10 feet tall and I pruned it back and it's getting ready to bloom again. You can see little blooms on there. This one's pink. Uh, but I had to take it back because it was just too overgrown. It needed some shaping and reshaping. I like it wild because I got the space. So literally that one was like 15 years of growth before I ever pruned it. <clears throat> and then I'm growing <clears throat> Dusty Miller um, and Impatience and one petunia in this because this one does get a little bit of sun right on the side where the petunia is. But mostly it's in shade. Uh, and then I cleared a little seating area by carving out the trees, which is where the kids got the idea to make the huts from and the pads, which I think is fantastic. Such an inspiration. Oh, let me show you this rose over here. So these are blackberries I let grow up by themselves. I really tried to plant this with something else, but this is sun at this time of the year under the shade in the summer. So the blackberries naturally planted themselves. And I was like, hey, I'm, people are out there planting blackberries. I'll let these grow and I'll uh, have a little very easily accessible blackberry um, group. So this is a, a knockout rose that's red. It's about as red as they get. It's very pretty. It's like a really like kind of a deep pink red. <clears throat> this is also a knockout rose. There's a fig there that Noel gave me. It's going to grow up into a big tree. I'll show you in the front. Um, they start out yellow. You can see that that's yellow, but on the bud, they're like a really bright yellow and then they mellow out to a white, but this one is cross pollinated <clears throat> and it's got a little pink around the edge, which is so pretty. And that's what's so surprising about plants. See, there's the bud. See how yellow that is? Gorgeous. Um, they will alter each other's flower color a little bit. There's a little white rose, same thing, yellow that turns white. Now like here, you'll see it's cross-pollinating with that yellows. So some of them are the true color of the coral and some of them are a lighter coral as a result, which I think is very, very pretty. It's always an, a nice surprise. And then yellow Dutch irises with carpet rose. Carpet rose is the best rose for the shade. Um, they grow on the path over there that we just came out of. I've planted a couple, they do well, they bloom every year. I've got some planted over here next to the hydrangeas in the shade. <clears throat> and then there's one even back here behind all this that got moved because I put a septic tank in. And it is right here. I forgot about it. It still blooms every year in deep shade. So that's your rose for the shade. If you have a shady yard and you love roses, you can grow a carpet rose in the shade. And it will bloom and it'll be beautiful. Out here, I planted eggplant. It never came up. It might surprise me and come up later. Uh, so the grass grew up where I plowed it and I didn't want to like weed it because <coughs> um, I might kill the eggplant. So then I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw a wildflower seed out here and grow a wildflower garden with bachelor's buttons and poppies and zinnias and uh, cosmos. So I'm doing that in several spots in the yard. So I've marked this off. This is going to be my butterfly bee uh, flower garden. I let the natural clover grow up too. Bees love that. And usually I would just mow all this out, but I'm being more bee conscious. Cautious. 
And then up here on this patio, I've got a patch back here. <clears throat> this is uh, purple basil. I'll close up for you so you can see it. This was planted by the birds, but I've also put wildflowers in this spot too. And I was trying to grow like three watermelons. They take a lot of space. They have not germinated yet. So I'll probably replace them with three other watermelons. This is gladiolas. And then I transplanted a blue hydrangea. Blue is the natural color of a hydrangea. I have a lot of purples and reds, which I will show you. Uh, gardenias. I have made starts from these in the front garden. You'll see them when we go out there, but see that? That is the beginning of the gardenia bloom. And because it's warm today, it will probably speed up the blooming. They, t they usually bloom well in like 70 to 80 degree weather. Uh, this is a tea rose, smells beautiful. Um, this is a, right here, that is a yellow <clears throat> climbing rose. I got it from Noel. I took it from clipping. Gladiolas in here. I'll show you back around when these all bloom out. And this is a red climbing rose that she has planted next to the other one. And then I've got lilies um, back here. Two purple hydrangeas. They're getting ready to really show up. Really pretty. Um, and you see how big they get. <laughs> it's about five foot wide, about five feet tall. Uh, this is a carpet rose that's in the shade. Same color as... Well, it's not the one, like, the one in the, the rose bed or, or coral. These are more of a hot pink. <clears throat> and then I have one in the front that's a completely different color. This is a purple hydrangea as well. And I got, you know, different uh, plants to flower at different times. And then up here, I'm growing wildflowers as well. Zinnias, Cosmos. Uh, I've got some petunias in here for color. Look at this petunia. It's got little hearts. Got some tomatoes. This is where I'm starting my seeds because they didn't germinate in the ground and I don't know what they look like. I haven't grown food before, really, um, or paid attention to its leaves, so I need to be able to recognize it. These are peas. Uh, this is a cantaloupe or squash. And then I've got cucumbers, cabbage. They're actually coming up over here because it's full sun and I'm going to start them here and move them out into the yard. Little petunia window box. All right, and these are knockout roses as well, which I also prune back about a week before I prune the one out in the yard, and they're already blooming, so it takes, took about three weeks. It's been cool, and then here I've got a shady spot, so I'm planting um, irises that like the shade, and I'm also trying to grow on patience. I'll show you that one later, <clears throat> and the next video won't be as long as this one because I've already shown you the path and all that, and that's not going to change drastically, but next time I'll show you just how it's progressing. So I'm coming through the side gate again, or the side yard. Go through the side yard or the patio. I like both directions, but this just makes me walk a little more, which is very important to get exercise in. These are hot pink hydrangeas. Look at those. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me get it closer to see if you can get the color. Yeah, that's a little better. It's still brighter than that. Uh, I put them this way so that they would, this color, so they would complement the um, impatience. I could have done blue. I love the blue ones. Anyway, the window boxes are overhung, so they're shady, but this front yard is very sunny. So in the window boxes, I put impatience. The patients are great for the shade. Petunias are great for uh, direct sun and they're easy plants they're annuals but they bloom from the time that you put them out until they uh get first frost and die so they're a really good long season growing plant definitely worth the value for putting in an annual i don't put annuals in everywhere i usually go for perennials for the most part but i do plant my planters with annuals <clears throat> some of them this is knockout rose in a completely different color they start out light pink they uh cross pollinated so now they have this beautiful sort of pinkish color. What I missed over here though, is look at this. That is also a carpet rose. And see that color? It's a blushy sort of peachy pink with some yellow in it. It's kind of peachy, peachy yellow. Hard to describe. 
gorgeous. It starts out orange and then opens up to that. And this one will keep blooming. This one's in uh, mostly shade because it, this far into the front, it's just in the overgrowth. And I got tomatoes in here with Cosmos. This is a bed that I planted that I'm working on. I put lilies in here because I was doing a wildflower garden here. I um, sowed it too early. I don't know if any of that seed is gonna come up. And the grass started to grow back, so I planted the lilies so that they'll dominate it, and then I put wildflower seed in here so I can just keep letting it go. And then the grass will grow up in it and just look normal. You know, it'll look like it's supposed to, like a meadow. And as you see, roses across the front, roses across the front. There's a beautiful one with a little more intense pink color. I've got uh, bearded irises up here. I dug them up out of someone's yard that was going to be demolished and changed it to a business park. Me and Noel, my next door neighbor and best friend, went and got those and uh, <clears throat> dug them up and planted them in our, our yard. And I didn't know if they'd bloom this year, but they bloomed. And I got, uniquely enough, all yellow. There's yellow and purple ones that were in this yard. But look at this. This is salvia. Look at that against the roses. And salvia is a perennial, comes back, so I always plant that one with the salvia. And then just a little view of my front porch. I'll come up here and give you a quick look out, because when you're up, everything looks prettier. Of course, my cat, who's been laying on my chair, messing things up. Look out across. Now, me and Noel always coordinate our yards. We do completely different things, but we use a lot of the same plants, so it draws the eye across and unifies the spaces. And then you'll see that I've got some vegetables in here and wildflowers. And then in this bed, it's monkey grass. Monkey grass will bloom the same time as the crepe myrtle. I have a crepe myrtle right back there uh, that I cut back just because I was trying to get to the other underbrush. It'll do fine, I'll come back. Uh, Rose of Sharon's bloom the same time as them. So I have a late summer crop, that, you know, crop of flowers that will come in and bloom all at the same time. The monkey grass will bloom. That's what I bordered this with. And what I did is I took the monkey grass from here and in the back <clears throat> and just cut it halfway out. And it's already rebounded and regrew in all the areas that I took it from and the areas that I've transplanted it. This is a Encore Azalea. This one is bicolored, has two different color of flowers, but these will bloom all year long. Um, they can be in the sun or the shade. So I've got them planted on the bank over there in the shade and I've got one here in the sun and they do well in both areas. They grow a lot bigger in the direct sunlight and they'll bloom all the way from spring till fall several times. They bloom like every couple of weeks. Um, so that's a great plant to have in your yard if you want some color and you like azaleas, but it's modified so that it blooms more than once a year. And they come in colors like this one's kind of a pink and pink and light pink. And then the ones over there are hot pink and purplish pink. Um, that tends to be the colors you get them in, but they're a very high impact, low maintenance plant. So this is the gardenia I cut from the gardenia in the back. These are uh, daylilies, which will bloom when the uh, <coughs> border of monkey grass, which is called Larry Opie, blooms. And then I've got like black eyed Susans in here. I've got a bunch of uh, dinner plate dahlias and dahlias and lilies planted out in all of these beds along with wildflowers in these beds that are out here. Um, and here I've got them amongst the, uh, the other ones just to bring some interest when they, they bloom at their phase of time when they do bloom. So here I've got uh, a start from <clears throat> gardenia. This is a start I did from the purple uh, crepe myrtle because I wanted to bring some purple into the front yard and have that little pop. So this I did from a cutting, it's about two years old and I finally put it in the ground. These were about two years old as well, they're in the ground now. Everybody's doing good, looking happy. There's gonna be big dinner plate dahlias and dahlias in here and some lilies. And then right here I have another small wildflower garden. This is uh, Cosmos with zinnia and smaller zinnia and then Bells of Ireland. And I don't know what Bells of Ireland looks like so I can't tell you if it's growing or not. And then over here, I'm growing some peas. I was growing cucumbers here. Uh, nothing germinated, so I have to plow this back up again and try to refarm it, or I might just return it back to uh, grass. <clears throat> and then in here, uh, these are tomatoes and cosmos. 
Uh, this is uh, irises, and then these are lilies, the red lilies. So those out there, the day lilies are orange. These are like kind of a, a bright red. It look really nice and contrasting. And then of course the monkey grass around here, which will bloom when all that blooms, will be purple blooms. This is a uh, sweet potato. They come in uh, green and in purple and dusty biller and then a new guinea impatient this gets sun and shade and they do well in sun and shade all of these plants so it's a no-brainer for a spot that gets sun part of the day really directly and shade the rest and then for your direct shade you can also do dusty miller which will grow a little less quickly and impatience which love the shade they're great color uh, for dark places <clears throat> And then on this side, I've got, uh, in these planters, I've got more Coreopsis. And then these are uh, actually violets. Then I put a Cosmos in there. I put a Cosmos in each of these baskets to bring that color from all over the other yard. But Coreopsis is also a perennial. Uh, violets grow wild in the grass, but I like them so much, I let them grow up selectively in beds and flower pots if they show up there. Now that's a purple hydrangea back there. Beautiful, rich color. And Noel has knockout roses. This is a uh, lilac. It's bloomed a little bit once. It doesn't really like it in this climate. And then we have a fig tree. She gave me one for the back. There's one for the front. So we're carrying the fig trees across. This is an odd variety. They don't grow very, very large. They're kind of topiary looking and here I have irises and then I have uh, the uh, gladiolus and then this is a red bud I have a red bud here a red bud there and they're daughters of the red bud in the front so these just ended up where they were at and I let them live I didn't plant this and then in there I've got a uh, hibiscus that comes back with hibiscus has a uh, a rough leaf instead of a shiny leaf it'll come back in a uh, cooler climate when it gets cold in the winter unlike florida where you could grow uh shiny leaf hydrangeas all year long and they make hedges stuff out of hydrangeas uh you can't do the same here so i planted purple hydrangeas i did a zigzag pattern remembering that they're going to grow about five feet wide and tall and they'll fill up this, this, this area and then behind them i've got knockout roses which will look great with this stuff, the kind of hot pur purplish pink and the hot pink. And then in here, this is a <clears throat> mimosa. Mimosa is uh, kind of an invasive type species that is brought here as a specimen. Gorgeous. They smell like peaches. They have pom-poms that look like something out of Dr. Seuss. They're kind of like white and then they fade to a uh, hot pink on the end and they smell like peaches. And also in the summertime, if you touch their leaves, they're not doing it right now for me. But if you touch the leaf, the leaf will actually curl up and wither. Uh, and then when you go away, it'll come back out and come back to its normal shape. So they have like a defense mechanism. It's kind of weird. This is Laura Petalum. It blooms. Uh, really like pretty, like hot, perp, hot pink uh, flowers in the early uh, spring, uh, like around February here. And then that's a crepe moral. It's hot pink growing up between them. But I just love the way that contrasts against the green. And then I've got crepe myrtles here. These are hot pink. The red bud, which has hot pink flowers, kind of like a purplish pink. And then look at this rose by the mailbox. So there's a reason why my mailbox is pink. It's not because I'm crazy about pink myself, but it's just like everything that was here was pink and it just looks better that way. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the garden tour. I hope you enjoyed this long video. We'll see you later.